everyone, welcome back. I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited uh, for everyone that's been watching our videos and learning and enjoying our content. I really appreciate it. Um, this channel is for you if you are looking for information on all things women's hormones and health and aesthetics. Um, and if you like the content that we're putting out, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and share it with a friend. That would help us a lot on getting our channel out there to more people um, and being able to help more women like you. So today we are finishing up our series on estrogen metabolism. Um, so you'll remember in the first video, we talked about the different phases of estrogen metabolism. So we talked about in the liver, going down the good pathway, the bad pathway and the okay pathway, right? And we talked about the implications of all of those. In our second video, we talked about the fact that even after you go down the good pathway, um, you still have to get rid of that intermediate metabolite. And we do a lot of that through a couple different pathways. So we talked about glutathione sulfur transferase for getting rid of kind of your bad quinones, right? And then we talked about methylation for um, methylating and packaging up the even like good, so to speak, metabolites to get them out of the body. So now we've methylated, right? So we've made them water soluble, okay? Now we have to move them out. So how do we do that? The most important part, well, not the most important part, one of the things to think about is that uh, when you package up something and make it water soluble, it's inside of a cell and a cell has a fatty membrane. Basically there's lipophilic and waterphilic. And when you think about lipophilic, um, those are things that are fat loving. So they can easily go back and forth through the membrane. The membrane doesn't reject them. Um, but think about like oil and water, right? How they separate. Um, when you have a water soluble element and you're trying to get it across the membrane, you have to have transporters. So first step, we have to transport them across the cell membrane. And those transporters can be slowed down by certain things. So they can be slowed down by environmental toxicants. They can be slowed down by medications, um, like proton pump inhibitors are a huge one that slows down your, um, your receptors and slows down that transport system. Um, that is common, a lot of patients are on them. And uh, certain antibiotics can also slow them down. So to transport it out of the cell, and then what will happen is we go out through the kidneys, into the urine or urinate it out, perfect. Or we go out through the bile, okay, um, and into the GI tract, and then it goes out as feces. Um, when we get into the GI tract, we start talking about glucuronidation, which is another you know, big um, detox pathway. Um, when we think about this, we start to think about the estrobiome or the estrobilome. Um, and we, talk, we start thinking about your microbiota, your gut microbiota and what's going on in the GI tract, which can also affect estrogen reabsorption. And we're gonna talk about this. So first of all, um, if you're going out through the bile, right? So if you're going out through the bile and into the GI tract, having healthy bile, being able to create healthy bile is important. So things that support healthy bile would be things like lecithin, um, eggs are high in lecithin, so eggs can be great. Um, taurine is important for bile production. So those are some things to think about. So I'm gonna move on into the GI tract. So basically what the body does is the body packages up your estrogen into this nice package. And in theory, right? This nice package should move right through your intestine and go right out. Well, in reality, with all of the um, kind of difficulty we put our microbiome through, that cannot always be the case. So in the GI tract, there are a lot of different organisms, right? We know that the, that the microbiome is full of a ton of different organisms, and it's all about the balance of the organisms, the balance of good to bad, and making sure that you have a good um, diversity in your microbiome. So one of the things that a lot of the um, bacteria in your GI tract can create is something called beta-glucuronidase. Beta-glucuronidase deconjugates things. So it's really helpful because it helps you to um, break down large carbohydrates, it helps you to absorb some of your flavonoids, um, and it also does help with uh, bilirubin, with the bilirubin cycle. But beta-glucuronidase will also deconjugate your estrogen and make it so that it can be reabsorbed. Basically, it takes that nice fancy package, breaks it apart and says, okay, nope, it's opened. And then the body can reabsorb it. 
they've done uh, multiple studies and looking at estrogen. So they did a radioactive study on estrogen where they injected women with radioactive estrogen and they were trying to look at how much makes it out of the body. The expectation was that a lot would make it out. What they actually found is that women with higher beta-glucuronidase levels, there was a high level, a very large amount of estrogen that was reabsorbed back into the system. So when you think about um, estrogen metabolism and you think about symptoms of estrogen dominance, right? So those heavy clotty periods, fibroids, endometriosis, um, severe pain, things like that. Um, we start to think about, are we reabsorbing our estrogen or is it actually leaving the body? Beta-glucuronidase is huge for that. So this is all about gut health, right? And we are gonna be diving into this channel a little bit more on gut health um, in future episodes. But when we think about gut health, we're thinking about enhancing a healthy microbiome. What does this mean, right? So first of all, if you're thinking about microbiome, um, you should get it tested. How do you do it? With stool testing. Stool testing is a great way to check your microbiome. Um, you can see what bacteria are in there, what good bacteria, what bad bacteria, if they're in the right concentrations. You can check for things like candida um, through stool testing. And I actually just had a patient the other day who was very convinced that she had candida. And was convinced that candida was part of her issue. And stool testing confirmed it was not. So oftentimes you don't know what's going on in your gut unless you test for it. And stool testing, functional medicine stool testing is a great way to do that. The other thing that we wanna think about with the, with the GI tract is things like SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So basically, small intestine bacterial overgrowth is a um, backup of normal bacterium in the large intestine that back up into small intestine and grow there. They're not normal there. It can cause a lot of gas and bloating, that's the hallmark of SIBO, um, and then diarrhea and constipation. SIBO needs to be tested with a breath test. So oftentimes SIBO testing is really not done very well. SIBO needs to be tested with a breath test, um, but that can make a huge difference in your microbiome as well. So we wanna look for things like candida. We wanna do a stool analysis to check for um, healthy or healthy microbiota, to check for any pathogenic bacteria and to see where your balance is. Um, and you can check beta glucuronidase that way. Okay, so we can actually check your levels. And then you wanna check for things like SIBO if you have symptoms that correlate with that. So what can you do to help make sure that you have a healthy microbiome? So first of all, this is where um, for estrogen metabolism, this is where the supplement calcium deglucurate comes in to play. So um, this is not calcium, although it has a name in it, it's not calcium, it doesn't function that way. What calcium deglucurate does is it helps to um, counteract the effects of the beta-glucuronidase, right? So it keeps your estrogen all packaged up. Um, the key with calcium deglucurate is you need a pretty high dose of it. Um, so this is something that you do, that you may wanna ask your practitioner about, but in order to get good doses, you may need stronger doses than you think you do. Um, things that can help with calcium deglucurate would be like citrus, uh, carrots, um, things like that can be really, really helpful with calcium deglucurate levels as well. But if you're really severely estrogen dominant or a little overweight, um, then calcium deglucurate usually needs to be at like fairly high doses to be really effective. Um, the other thing we wanna think about is just general health for our microbiome, right? So things that really affect our, our microbiome are gonna be um, antibiotic use. Now I'm not saying don't use antibiotics, not even a little bit. What I'm saying is if you use antibiotic, you should be actively repairing your gut after use. So microbi um, antibiotic use plays a big role. Um, toxicants play a huge role. So um, there's actually many research studies on toxicants and environmental estrogens like xenoestrogens, some of your endocrine disrupting compounds, all affecting your microbiome. Last week, I talked a little bit about skincare products, right? And not putting on skincare products that are full of phthalates and parabens and all of those um, toxins that you really don't wanna be putting on your skin. This matters even for your microbiome. Um, so making sure that you're avoiding plastic water bottles, avoiding heating things up in plastics, and 
really cleaning, tidying up your skincare, um, which doesn't mean going organic skincare that doesn't work. You want your skincare to work, but you want it to be clean, right? And so clean medical grade skincare really can make a huge difference because we know based on research studies that those things will affect your microbiome. The other thing that we know is that your microbiome is affected by diet, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's affected by diet for up to 24 hours after your um, ingestion of whatever you're eating. So what you ate yesterday can still be affecting your microbiome today. So tidying up the diet is important. What does this look like, right? We're tying it all together and we're thinking, well, what are the things that I can do at home to help with estrogen metabolism? Eating the rainbow of fruits and vegetables is gonna be really, really important, right? So we talked about carrots as being good for um, calcium deglucurate and uh, the brassica family, right? Like broccoli and cabbage and things like that being really good for helping um, with DIM levels, with dinomethane levels, um, which helps with the first pathway of estrogen metabolism, right? Which we talked about. Um, we talked about broccoli sprouts being super high in sulforaphane and sulforaphane being important for the um, glutathione sulfur transferase enzyme and being able to package up those quinones, get them out of the body. So broccoli sprouts are fantastic. Um, flax seeds can be great because they're high in fiber, right? We want things to move through the GI tract. And again, with that, we want, um, with wanting things to move through the GI tract, water, right? If you don't drink enough water, you will be constipated. And if you're constipated, you will end up absor reabsorbing more of your estrogen than you would have if you had normal bowel movements. Um, that's also why candida can be a, an important kind of thing to look at with constipation in the GI tract, because candida really does can show up a lot as constipation, so can SIBO. So these things are all really, really important. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're encouraging our body to go down the best pathway, the best pathway. Um, we wanna make sure that we're able to package up that estrogen, right, and, and actually like get it ready to go out, and then we want it to go out in the GI tract. And you'll remember that in both the first and second video, I, I use the analogy of the pipe, right? So you're not gonna unblock a pipe at the very beginning, like where you are, if a pipe is blocked at the very beginning. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to, are you having GI symptoms? gas, bloating, constipation, are you struggling with those things? That's where you may wanna start with stool testing with your doctor um, and checking beta glucuronidase levels, checking for things like candida or SIBO if they're in your picture. Um, sometimes hormones can play a role in this, right? So we know that thyroid, uh, one of the common symptoms of hypothyroidism is constipation, right? So can nutrition, so looking at that, then moving our way into um, things like methylation or the glutathione sulfur transferase, supporting those things to see if we can help with phase two detox. And then if that really isn't where the, the key is, then you wanna be supporting all three pathways so that things are moving through effectively but not getting stuck at the end. We really don't want things to be stuck at the end in the GI function piece of this. Um, the other thing is that we actually talked uh, to Kelly Michelle um, with Keep Moving Forward about this exact topic. We talked about GI function in women um, and nutritional components for GI function in women because sometimes what you see is that if you're not actually eating, right? Not drinking enough water, not actually eating, there's no reason for things to move through. So we're gonna link that video right here and you can take a look at that. Um, and then in terms of phase three detox, just make sure that you are um, paying attention to what your GI is doing eat the rainbow, get your broccoli in, drink lots of water, and then we'll see you in our next video. What questions do you have about estrogen detox and what other videos are you guys wanting to see? If you like our content that we're putting out, please go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button and share it with a friend.